Now we all get them, those repetitive emails that we need to keep, but we just don't want to have to file them all the time they come in. You want to have some advanced rules to handle this without you having to take care of it all the time. The problem is in Windows, they're not going to give you the advanced rulemaking capabilities that you require. That's reserved for their flagship Outlook products that you have to pay for. So today I'm going to cover how to make automatic rules using the web interface for both Gmail and Outlook. As a little primer, we're going to talk first about how when you create emails in your email client, how they're created there, but they're stored on your Gmail or Outlook mail server. Years ago in the POP3 days, the email was either created or stored on that particular device and you can see them on other devices. So today, since devices only sync with the server and then receiving those new emails, running the rules on the server makes the rule effective no matter which device you're using to access your emails. Since there's no rulemaking here on the client, we're going to go to the web interface to do it. If you're used to using the full Outlook, you'll know that you can create rules to handle incoming emails. And besides these basic options, you can go to advanced options and say you can do multiple things, move them, delete them, whatever you want. You see here I have a bunch of YouTube uh, people who subscribe to my channel or make a comment. I want these automatically filed here in the subdirectory or the, or the comments directory. So uh, I'm going to create some rules to do that. Now here in the app, I can just right click and I can say uh, do different things, set a flag, I can move it. I can do all sorts of things with it. I can drag it to a thing, but I think it's tiring. But sometimes you want to have stuff that automatically goes there. So let's go take a look. Now Gmail doesn't use the term folders. It uses the terms categories and labels to organize their emails. So if you scroll down here in Gmail, you'll see that you'll come down to uh, all your stuff that's listed. If you show a little bit more, you'll see down here, Manage Labels. If you click on this, you'll see different categories of labels. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Uh, first thing you'll see is System Labels, which there's all your ones that the system created in order to manage your emails. If we scroll down uh, a little bit uh, farther than System, there's Categories, uh, Social, and all that. But here's the Labels. Okay, and you notice these match the folders that are shown in your client, your out your mail client. As a matter of fact, if I go here and I expand the view, you'll see there's the categories there uh, that I have in the folders, and they're the same ones that are in Gmail as labels. By the way, you can do it in here in labels and create labels in here, the client, or on the web, either one, they'll eventually sync and you'll have folders and labels that match. But let's go talk about rules. Instead of using the menu to use the generic filter maker, I'm going to go to an individual email and I'm going to look here. I'm going to say filter messages like these because here's one that's coming in from YouTube that I don't want to mess with ever again. So in this particular case, it sees who it's coming from. And in the subject, I'm going to use the words that I need because I may have more than one email coming from YouTube. Okay, so the word's going to be subscribed. So that means a notification is going to uh, do that. Uh, anytime a, a subscribe comes in from YouTube. So once I have all my parameters in, I can say if they're a bigger size or doesn't have certain words. But once I'm all done with that, I'm going to click on, not on search, but on create filter. And it's going to expand even to more options. And you'll see here, you can skip the inbox, archive it, mark as red, star it, apply the label, choose label. Anyways, there's a whole bunch here. Okay. So what are we going to do? Okay. We can click on categorize as and choose a category. If we use a drop down here, well, that's not really what we want to do. What we really want to do is go back up, okay, and find the one where it says, oh, apply the label, choose label. And here's those categories that we are labels we created for different ones. And the one I want to choose is I have to figure out uh, YouTube subscriptions. That's business. Uh, I need to scroll down a little bit more, hover over it. Oh, there's subs. So I click there, and there's what it's going to be applied. So once you uh, hit, click on the create filter, and boom, it recreates that new filter for that uh, email rule.
Now you can do another one. Here's one that is a comment rather than a sub. I get notified on those as well. So then all I have to do is uh, create a rule for that. And both rules will operate uh, depending upon what email comes in. First I have to click on it. And I come back up here to, not the labels, but over here. Click on this and say filter messages like these and do it again. So once you've created this with any more email rules that you want, in order to review them, you just go up here to filters and blocked addresses right here. You click on that and you can see them and click on the edit link on the right in case you didn't do it right the first time. So if we log into Outlook through a web browser, you'll see uh, the usual stuff. And it affects exactly the client, exactly like it did in Gmail. Those rules that we create will come out and handle your emails for you. So let's uh, look at how you do that on Outlook. To access the Outlook, you go over here to the settings icon and you scroll down till you get down to view all. Okay. And go over here to rules. The terminology is basically uh, more logical than the one in uh, Google. So I'm going to click on add new rule here. Okay. And it's going to say name your rule. So I want to call it uh, what I want this rule to do. Uh, that way I'll know what it means. But if you click over here and there's a email there, I can use it just like I did in Google to create a rule based on that particular email. Okay, now I can select a folder to move. So I can so I don't have one or I can search for one. So if I already have a folder, I just type in and sure enough, I have a new egg folder already. Right? And it's going to automatically move it. But there's more options. And this is where you can add conditions. My name is in this box. Uh, whatever. Add an action to it. You can actually do multiple conditions and do the same thing. Subject includes, keywords, mark with. It's a very nice uh, rulemaking uh, process here. Now I can do other things here. I can add additional actions. Okay, and I select here and I can say different things. If you say market is red, then it won't be highlighted with a numeric value as unread. And you might miss it. So you may not want to use that one, but there's all different things you can do uh, to create multiple emails uh, rules for a single type of email. So take a while to examine all these different ones here and, and create maybe a, a couple different rules that affect a single email. As a matter of fact, there's an, add an exception. You may want to add a rule that says always transfer this to a, a particular directory, except if it's flagged with an importance, then don't move it. So once I'm done making these uh, uh, rules, I can just say save and It'll add that to my rules. And here they are, the list of new rules. So when you create that rule, you may want to sit here and review its summary here and it tells you exactly what's going to happen. It's going to, anything from promo, it's going to move it to the blah, blah, blah folder and do all that. Now on the right of that rule, you'll see a play button, a sorting button, an editing button, and a delete button. But the play button allows you to run the rule. Look at the left, at the client over there, as I click on this, you'll see that it actually went ahead and did it. And it even left you a message that it said it did. So let's go take a look. Let's go over here to the folders and click on the new egg folder. And sure enough, there it is. It got moved correctly exactly where I wanted it. So you can repeat this process by just clicking down below here and say new folder, create a new folder, and then create a rule to move that to that folder. So if we look here in our inbox, you'll see here there's no email here. But if I click on new egg down here, there it is. It was automatically moved in the email client. So your advanced rules are affecting what you see and interact with on your Windows 10 mail client. There you have it. There's how to create Gmail rules or Outlook rules using the web interface that will help you manage your emails in your Windows 10 client. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.